Hello. In this program, I'm going to show you how I made this image. This sort of still life art isn't something that you just happen across. You've got to um, plan the whole shot. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, what I did uh, was make myself a, a small drawing, uh, such as this one, just to give me an idea of the concept of what I wanted to go for. Uh, so here I have uh, a rough sketch just showing all the elements. So I have the, uh, the bottle uh, and uh, a jar, uh, pouring some liquid from the bottle into the jar. Uh, but I thought it might be a, a good idea to just shake things up a bit, and instead of using uh, a liquid, we'll use air and fill the rest uh, of the void with water. Therefore, I'm going to do the whole thing in a fish tank upside down. Uh, that is why you need a bit of planning. Okay, so what elements do we have? Uh, well, we have uh, the, the glassware. Um, for this bottle, I thought I would use uh, something like this, uh, which is a uh, standard chemistry set type bottle with a uh, pipette. And for the, uh, the jar, uh, I was just going to use uh, an old uh, marmalade jar um, which uh, I will peel the labels off uh, and just use that uh, for, for this part of the image. So what we need to do is work out a way that we can suspend these things uh, in the tank um, so that we can take the shot. Um, gluing things onto glass is incredibly difficult. Uh, and it's okay if you want to permanently glue something onto the glass uh, because you can use uh, an epoxy resin and that will work reasonably well. Uh, but even that comes off from time to time. Hot melt glue guns uh, are really, for this type of thing, a non-starter. Uh, I did try it. Uh, it sort of works sometimes. You can't really have that. You've got to have it working all the time. Um, so a solution I found, uh, for this bottle anyway, uh, was to use um, one of these uh, suckers. Uh, so that I'm just going to um, force onto the bottom of the glass like that. There we go. Uh, and that is good enough to hold the jar uh, probably at the right angle underneath the water uh, and doesn't harm the, the glass at all. Uh, works quite well. I find it to work quite well. So for this element, the jar, um, I tried all different types of glues, um, hot melt glue gun, uh, etc., uh, to, uh, to stick something onto the base here so I could suspend it. Uh, I found it uh, quite difficult using um, those methods. But what did work uh, were these little sticky pads uh, that you can get. Um, these are designed for uh, electrical wiring, um, and you usually just put a tie wrap through these. Uh, but they do have a foam back sticky pad on the back, uh, which I found adhered very well um, to the bottom of these jars. And the, uh, the foam in the pad uh, takes up all the uh, little dimples in the glass, etc. Uh, so it gives you a, a very good bond. Uh, and also with these, um, I found that uh, just using a, a standard um, M6 uh, standoff uh, fits just nicely in the uh, center of these. So you don't even need to drill it. Uh, you just push it in, and that is easily strong enough uh, to hold the jar. So in true uh, Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. So this is the jar with all the labels taken off uh, and uh, with the uh, suspension uh, built into it. There we go. So with those elements uh, done, the next stage uh, is to build the rest of the set. Uh, from the uh, drawing that I've made, uh, I, need, uh, I know that I need to build the set uh, upside down in a fish tank. Uh, so, we'll move on to the fish tank. So, to prepare for this, uh, what I've 
previously done is built this stand. I've built this up uh, reasonably high um, because obviously um, building the set uh, totally upside down, you want to be looking ever so slightly um, down on the subject normally. So in this case, we would be looking ever so slightly up on the subject. So we just put the tank on here. Somewhere around there. Uh, and now we need to build up the rest of the set. Uh, so I'm going to add a retort stand um, to give me some scaffolding uh, to hang the various bottles uh, and jars and things in the tank. So here we go. These are available from, uh, well, I got this one from eBay, for instance. Uh, you can get them uh, from any lab suppliers, uh, school supplies as well, that sort of thing. Okay, just pop that on there. You can, of course, if you wish, uh, clamp things to the glass, but uh, being glass, it's not a good idea. Uh, it's going to end in tears eventually. Um, so this is, I think, a bit of a better uh, system. Okay, so now it's time to start uh, popping uh, things in the tank. I'm going to start with the little jar. Place that like that. So the idea with this, of course, is to have the bottle suspended about here somewhere. Uh, and then uh, the bubbles will come out of the bottle uh, into, uh, into the jar hopefully. You should be able to get the sort of idea of what we're doing. Okay, I'll just check that from a different angle. Right. Okay, so the final thing will be the airline pipe, just to give us some bubbles. Okay, I'm going to move the whole assembly just to the centre of the tank to give me a bit more space for the picture. Okay, and that for the um, setting up of the tank is just about it for the time being. Obviously the next thing to do uh, is to actually put some water in the tank, uh, which is what I'm going to do very carefully uh, right now. Okay, now our tank is uh, full of water. Uh, we're ready for the next stage, uh, which would just be to do a little test with some bubbles, just to see where they go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just gently uh, blow down this pipe, and we should be able to see uh, some bubbles coming up in the right place. Yep, that seems to weigh just about right. Okay, so for the, uh, the set building, that's about it. Uh, what we need to concentrate on now uh, is uh, some lighting. Okay, so if I just get a lamp, this is a uh, Profoto B1X uh, studio flash, battery powered studio flash, uh, about 500 joules. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just put that onto this stand, onto that spigot that we've just clamped onto the stand. Like that. There you go. And now we have uh, a fairly low uh, angled uh, light. Uh, I've made sure that this is actually in line with one of the legs, just to make sure the whole thing is stable. Uh, now if I put my strip box on top of that, I need to just move things around a little. There we go. Like 
like so. There we go. So then this needs to be placed uh, behind the tank. Just pop this in here. Get all that in just about the right position. So you should be able to see that uh, this is more or less where you would put it if the whole thing was the other way around. So it would normally be in this angle, but we've reversed everything, so it's at this angle. With the set built, uh, it's now time to uh, get a camera in uh, and we'll have a look at uh, some test images. So I'm just going to pop a tripod around here somewhere. I'm using this uh, digital SLR camera uh, with uh, a tether which is going into this computer. I'll just pop that on there. Okay. Now I'll just set this up by eye to start with. Uh, and then we'll uh, start up uh, Capture One software uh, and take some test images. Okay. So on here I have a 24 to uh, 70 uh, zoom lens. I want some space around the, uh, the image. Uh, and initially I'm going to use it at the wide angle end anyway. Uh, something like that. Right, so now it's probably time uh, to start up the camera and start up the uh, Capture One software. Uh, so I'll just start that. And turn the camera on. And there we go. So the software has recognised the camera. Uh, we're on the flash sync speed. Uh, as far as the shutter is concerned, 100 ISO. Uh, I've just let the uh, aperture at an arbitrary f8 at the moment. Uh, and one of the first things that I will do, uh, as we usually do, uh, is I'll just take a blank uh, frame just to see that the ambient lighting isn't affecting the, uh, the picture too much. Uh, and I think that should be fine. Uh, we do have a few highlights from the studio lights, but uh, nothing within the tank area. Uh, so that seems to be OK. Right, so now I'll just put uh, this flash sync on the camera. Turn that on. So we can have a uh, test capture just to see uh, that everything's working. OK, so now you should be able to see um, or get an idea of the way that this is going to work. Uh, so we have uh, our jar in here uh, and bottle uh, and uh, the pipe and so on uh, and the tank itself. Uh, and that's all looking um, pretty good. Uh, as far as an uh, arbitrary uh, power level concerned, uh, I think that's about right, actually. Uh, just the look of the draw, didn't use any uh, meters. Um, just happened to be right, which is uh, pretty good. OK, so I'll zoom this uh, to the other end of the zoom. Like so, and we'll just do another test. OK. Yeah, I think that's uh, looking OK. We have um, filled the level in the tank specifically uh, to match the level of this bottle here. Uh, so there is a small amount of water over the top of that, but not very much at all. Uh, and I did that on purpose so that when the whole image is rotated, it looks like the bottle is actually sat on that surface. Right, uh, so I think we're probably ready to do um, a test with some bubbles. Gently blow down here. 
whilst taking a few uh, a few pictures. Okay. Excellent. So if we just review what we've just done. Yes, that's quite a nice one. And you can see that we've captured uh, some reasonable images. That's quite a nice one as well. Right. So I think I will have another go to give me some more uh, to go for. Uh, make sure everything's set. Looks OK. And off we go again. Okay, I quite like that one. All right, Let me just review the images. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Right, so now what we need to do uh, is just give ourselves a, a blank slate, as it were, uh, so that we can uh, use that in Photoshop um, to paint out all the bits that we don't want. So what I'm going to do now is, without moving the light at all um, and without moving the camera, I'm just going to take um, all of the equipment out of the fish tank to leave us with, um, with virtually nothing there. Uh, I'm going to do it in stages, because you never know when uh, you might need a bit of something. So I'm just going to take this off to start with. Being quite careful not to disturb anything else. Pop that down there. We'll just take another shot. Uh, now I'm going to take off the bottle. Like so. Take another shot. And now I'm going to take away the jar. And the rest of the scaffolding. So this is now going to be our blank slate. And just to make sure, I'll just take another one of those. OK. Now with all that captured, uh, I'll just mark the ones uh, that I want in uh, Capture One. Uh, and export them into Photoshop. OK, so here are all the images loaded into Photoshop. So we have the bubbles, we have the tank without the air tube, and we have the tank without any of the bits in, inside it. Uh, so the first thing to do is to form a stack of layers. Um, so I will just go to File, Scripts, load files into stack, uh, add open files, and just click on OK. This will make me a new document uh, which has uh, a separate layer for each uh, image. So I can just go down through these, and so on. Uh, so 
I'll just reorder that just to make it a bit more sensible. So that's the um, very last image. Uh, that's the one without the air tube, and these are the bubbles. Okay, so those who have been paying attention amongst you will have noticed that this is still all upside down. So what I can do is just select all of the layers, go to Edit, go to Transform, and rotate 180 degrees. That's rotated every layer. Uh, now I've been used to seeing these uh, the other way around, um, so I'm going to flip it horizontally as well. So I'm just going to go to uh, the same transform uh, and flip horizontal. Yes, there we go. So now they're all uh, virtually the, the right way around uh, for, for what I want. So I just turn these ones off and you can then see that we have a little movement between those two. Uh, so that will need to be realigned. So I'm just going to click on, uh, in fact, it might be an idea to find out which one is moving relative to the other one. Yeah, so they're all the same then that one has moved. So with that turned on, uh, I will take the opacity down. You can get Photoshop to do this for you, um, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I think it's just rotated about a point over here somewhere, uh, is just rotate that particular layer. So edit, transform, rotate. So I'll just have a little look. Yeah, it's about there somewhere. And it just needs to move. I'll just move that there. And all I'm doing is just lining this up by eye. There. OK, click on OK. So that's realigned that part of the, uh, the image. So I'll just take that back up to full, like so. Now the next thing to do is add a layer mask to the ones that I want to paint through. Uh, so what I will do is add a layer mask onto there and now wherever I paint it will reveal um, the tank beneath so for instance I can get rid of that clamp So, I'll just zoom in a bit. I'll take the hardness down a bit and the size. just paint those through. Like that. Okay. Uh, now if I go up a layer, so I will add a layer mask to that. Just turn off the ones underneath so I don't get distracted. I'm 
going to fairly quickly do this, just to save a bit of time. Uh, you could take a bit more care, uh, but you get the idea. So I'll just get rid of that clamp. And all this is doing is painting in the image which is underneath it. So that's the other edge of the tank. Uh, we'll just leave that as it is for the time being. Uh, so over here, air tube, etc. We can get rid of all that. a bit right so this bit here at the top um, we have the tube going into the bottle but we do have an image which is just a bottle so if I just take that off and add just the bottle and now add that one back on again um, we should be able to paint through this bit and go into just the bottle, like so. There we go. Let's make that quite believable, like that. Uh, so if I just zoom out a little, we should be able to see how far we've got so far. There. That's not a million miles away from the, uh, the drawing that we had in the first place. In fact, I'll just make a stamp layer, uh, which is uh, Shift, Control, Alt and E. So that's just made a stamp layer of all of the ones which are beneath it. just add a crop something like this click on OK Now we have quite a few air bubbles within the tank. Um, they can be cloned out. Uh, a simpler method uh, is just to add another layer above that one, um, fill that layer with black, like so, uh, and then add a uh, mask, uh, but add uh, an inverse mask which you can do by holding down the Alt key um, when you add the mask, which will make a, the mask itself black. So now wherever you paint with white uh, will, will reveal the black. So if I just make, whoops, make my brush a little bigger. And very soft. And I'll just go around ever so quickly the outsides here. Like so. If you make a mistake like I just did there, just swap the colours back and put it back. Uh, I'll just adjust the size down a bit. go uh, 
that's looking fine. So there we have it. That is how uh, we can make a bit of still life art, if you like. Now, if you like these sort of uh, studio things, uh, just click on the other images as they uh, turn up here, uh, and that will take you to some more of my videos. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.